Hello everybody. Today's lesson title is how does the Hillsborough disaster link to formal control? So you know that last lesson we left you with doing some research on the Hillsborough disaster. What I would like you to do is now put that title and date into your book and we shall look at that in more detail thinking about formal control as well. So the police and the courts and so on. You know a little bit about the Hillsborough disaster, I'm hoping, for the work that you did for research. What I want you to do now is watch this video. The link is on the um, links that I set you on Google Classroom, or indeed you can have a look. The link is below there if you've got your screen on. What we want you to do is watch this now, give yourself a little bit of extra information, and just spend some time doing a mind map of all the information about the Hillsborough disaster that you can find out, either that you found out in your research last time or watching this video clip. So I would press pause, have a little go at that mind map. You can see the mind map here. Essentially, that's just to remind you what a mind map is. Lots and lots of information. I'd spend sort of 10, 15 minutes on this. You might need to spend more if actually last lesson you feel perhaps now you did not do enough research ready for your information. There's loads out there readily available on the Hillsborough disaster. See what you can find out. So a little bit further on then, we've got a uh, heading from a newspaper on the day or four days later of the Hillsborough disaster, so from April the 19th. What I want you to do is look at that newspaper front page. Tell us what it is telling us, write down what it is telling us about the disaster. What do we know? And then think about if you were a member of the public at the time, what would you infer? So what would you think? is going on in terms of what would you think about the fans? What would you think about the police? And what would you think about the media or this newspaper in particular? So have we got positive or negative press? Have we got good or poor comments? Which side do you think the paper is on? Have we got any bias and so on? I know you can only see the headings. That's all you need to see. But you need to think about some fans picked the pockets of the victims. Some fans urinated on the brave cops. Some fans beat up a PC giving the kiss of life. In other words, giving CPR. So press pause, spend about five to 10 minutes. What does this source tell us about the disaster? What does it make us think of the fans, the police and the media or the newspaper? And then let's have a look at, this is the same newspaper 23 years later so 23 years after Hillsborough so you can see this newspaper front page was released 23 years after the Hillsborough disaster there had been loads of investigations because a lot of the families of the victims or indeed people that were there at the time feel that things did not go particularly well as hopefully you know from what you've you've read and researched so what does this front page now tell us about the disaster and how do you think this is going to affect people's views towards the fans, towards the police and towards the media? So those same three groups, what are we now thinking now that we can see 41 lives could have been saved, says new probe or investigation. Cops smeared Liverpool fans to deflect blame. In other words, they made the Liverpool fans look bad. That's what it means by smearing, a smear campaign, make them look bad. The Sun say we are profoundly sorry for false reports and the families of the 96 victims have called for prosecutions. So press pause, spend some time having a look at that. What does it tell us about the disaster? How would it affect people's views? And then have a little look now, writing a small paragraph explaining your thoughts on how Hillsborough links to formal control. How did the formal control work? How would it affect control in the future? What things do you think may have happened or should have happened and changed as a result of the Hillsborough investigations and indeed the apology from the Sun? And you can see here the, the families of the victims of Hillsborough and what happened. So on the 26th of April 2016, families and friends of the 96 victims of the Hillsborough disaster celebrated a landmark result in the 25 year long investigation. So just put that in perspective, 
that is an awful long time your whole lives plus another 10 or so years these people have been grieving their loved ones but also investigating and trying to get some fairness for what went on for their children fathers brothers uncles cousins and so on and the courts ruled that the victims had been unlawfully killed following the actions of the police so in other words the police did things wrong that led to the deaths of these victims so the the blame has been absolutely put at the police force which is a really big landmark um, investigation and landmark decision to actually blame the police force for these deaths so is it fair to criticize the police though are the police not just actually doing the best they can in a very difficult situation what we've got here is some examples of things where the police have done a really cracking job or have sacrificed in the line of duty so this first picture is Keith Palmer, PC Keith Palmer, who was killed trying to apprehend the Westminster terrorists. So on Westminster Bridge outside the Houses of Parliament, he was killed. You've probably heard of him. Then we've got members of the NYPD following 9-11. And many of those worked for a week non-stop trying to find survivors and maintain order. They all just turned up at the site of the devastation and worked and worked and worked. There we've got police that generally are facing violence during protests, leaving many officers injured. That happens regularly. We've got another police officer trying to help the public, talking down a suicidal man, stopping someone from committing suicide. And then you can also see from that graph there that the number of police officers in England and Wales on the front line or giving support for um, frontline services has gone down. So if you have a look at it, Plus, police numbers in the UK are falling due to lack of funding. So thinking of all those things, I want you to finish with a paragraph that I do want you to send in to us if you're watching this lesson remotely at home. Is it fair to criticise the police? So I want you to wrap up all the things that you've talked about. I want a two-sided argument on this, really. So what I want to see is where it is OK to criticise the police, but where also it is not OK, things that are not OK and things we need to be thinking about in terms of, of, of the police not being criticised. So you might come up with a decision one way or the other, but I want to hear both sides of the argument. Okay, thank you for listening. Goodbye.